All right, in this video, I want to talk about rational expressions in domain. And the main thing to remember is that you simply, you don't want to divide by zero. Dividing by zero is undefined. It's not a number. We can't make sense out of it, so that means it's bad. So the basic thing we have to do is figure out what, if any, values of x will give zero in the denominator. And if there are any, we'll leave them out. Okay, so not all rational expressions have restrictions on the domain. There may not be anything that gives zero in the denominator, but for my examples, all of them will certainly have restrictions on the domain. So, okay, so again, just a, a rational expression is just a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So here I have three examples, and what I'm going to do is just look at the denominator of each one, set it equal to zero, the solutions to that equation will be the values of x that I have to exclude. So for part a, if we want to find the domain of x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 35, hey, I just set the denominator equal to 0. To me, the numerator is kind of irrelevant. Um, I mean, I do recognize that it's a rational expression, but a after that, I don't really, you know, in terms of finding the domain, it has no more importance. So, okay, so x squared minus 2x minus 35. I think we can factor that, so I need two numbers that multiply to negative 35 but um, add up to negative 2. So I think some combination of 7 and 5 will work. Since the middle term is negative, that means the bigger of these two numbers gets the negative sign. So, alright, I think that looks like a correct factorization. And now we simply set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So for the first part, if we add 7, we would get x equals 7. And if we subtract 5, we would get x equals negative 5. So those are the solutions to the equation x squared minus 2x minus 35 equals 0. So again, what that says is, it says 7 and negative 5 will produce 0 in the denominator, and that's bad. So in this case, we would say the domain, the domain is all real numbers. So all real numbers except uh, 7 and negative 5, okay? So that's it. That's the main idea. So let's do these other two examples real quick. So part B, we have x over 9x squared minus 3x. Again, I'm just going to take the denominator, 9x squared minus 3x, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. Okay, so again, you know, I've got, notice they're all quadratics, or excuse me, the first two are quadratics, the last one is not quite quadratic, but it'll still factor. Um, so for this quadratic, I notice there's no constant, so I can certainly factor out an x, and also there's a 9 and a 3, well, I could factor out the greatest common factor, which is 3, and then I guess in parentheses I would need a 3x back, and then a negative 1. So if we multiply that out, we would get 9x squared minus 3x. And again, we just set each part equal to 0, each factor. So if we set 3x equal to 0, if we just simply divide both sides by 3, we would get x equals 0. And if we set the 3x minus 1 equal to 0, well, I could add 1 to both sides. And then we could divide by 3, we would get x equals 1 third. So again, what I'm finding is I'm finding the values of x that have to be excluded. So again, the domain would be all reals except x equals 0 and x equals 1 third. So let's do our last example here. Um, let me copy it down since I ran out of room. So x cubed plus 4x over x to the fourth minus 1. So same thing, let's just find the domain of it. So, so I'm going to set the denominator x to the fourth minus 1 equal to 0 and in this case I believe we could factor this actually. To get the x to the fourth, so this is a difference of perfect squares. So to get the x to the fourth we could use x squared and x squared and then to get the negative 1 we could simply use negative 1 and positive 1 Okay, so now I'm going to ask myself, you know, can I factor this any further? Well, x squared minus 1 is again a perfect square. We can factor x squared minus 1 as x minus 1, x plus 1. 
And then I have to ask myself, you know, does x squared plus 1, does that factor? And, you know, you can play with it, but it turns out for sure that it does not factor. So I'll just drop that right down. And again, now I set each part equal to 0, each factor. So I set x minus 1 equal to 0. I'm going to set x plus 1 equal to 0. I'm going to set x squared plus 1 equal to 0. So for the first part, um, I'll just add 1 and get x equals 1. So that's going to be a value that has to be excluded from the domain. From our middle equation, we could simply subtract 1 and get x equals negative 1. So that'll be a value that has to be excluded from the domain. Um, you can almost reason out, well you can probably reason out that this last equation doesn't have solutions. I mean, what numbers can you square and add 1 to them and get 0 out? So maybe think about that, but maybe you try to factor it or maybe you tried to solve it by subtracting 1 and then you tried to take the square root of both sides. But remember, um, you can't take square roots of negative numbers. I put my minus sign in the wrong place. You can't take square roots of negative numbers. So again, that's trying to tell you that there's simply no solutions to this equation. So it says, okay, the only values that will produce zero in the denominator are positive one and negative one. So again, it says the domain would be all reals except x equals positive one and x equals negative one. Okay, so nothing too crazy. Um, you know, one remark, notice if we had started with x cubed plus 4x, if we had made it, you know, x squared plus 1, right? That's the part down here that we said, hey, has no solutions. So this would actually be an example, so forget all this other stuff now. If the original problem had been x cubed plus 4x over x squared plus 1, in this case, there's nothing that makes the denominator 0 which means the domain would simply be all real numbers. In that case, there would be no restrictions on the domain. So again, you know, a lot of rational functions that you see or rational expressions that you see um, will have restrictions, but not all of them. So just a little thing to be aware of. So all right, um, I hope these examples make some sense. Again, this is the basic idea. Anytime you have a fraction and you're trying to do domain, you just try to figure out what makes the bottom, uh, the denominator, equal to zero, and you throw those values out of the domain. So, all right, once again, hope this helps and makes some sense.